uh, one of the first things that these people uh, did with their resources actually was to build a church, and they had two churches built uh, in less than 10 years after slavery. And they, uh, like I said, they were, they were my family, uh, they were family for, for Oscar and myself, uh, and also the person that I would really like to thank the most and I wish she could be here is my grandmother who reared me and reared Oscar and my cousins and my brother. And it was because uh, to amuse us on the day before television, she told us all of these stories about her family. Uh, she used to have a box of photographs uh, uh, underneath, the, uh, underneath the bed and she would uh, bring them out and tell us, you know, like who was who. And it was kind of very strange to me for a while because uh, she was an only child, so I couldn't understand how we had all these uncles and aunts and cousins and whatever else. And then come to find out it was uh, a case of yours, mine, and ours. Uh, she was married uh, to a slavery and had four kids. She married a free man uh, who was a widower, and he brought, I think, two more kids uh, to the group, and then they had four more. And, Oscar and I are the descendants of Lizzie Bowden, who you'll be hearing about in a little bit. Uh, you know, before the years of uh, before slavery ended and shortly thereafter, uh, the people in West Warm Springs, uh, they were very, very spiritual people then. Uh, they wanted the church and they worshiped for a while uh, under the trees in the open air uh, at Old Christ Church up in Germantown, uh, possibly the Warm Springs Presbyterian Church, but it was their great desire to have uh, their own church. Uh, one of the, uh, the first church to be built was John Wesley, uh, Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, it was that it's no longer uh, in operation uh, as a church, but I like to think it's still serve our community well. So now I want to go to that kind of senior citizens. And there's another group I'd like to think is because of them that we were able to do the historic uh, designation on John Wesley, you know, seven years before this we came about. It's because the seniors used their funds to pay for it. And I'm really grateful uh, for that. The people in this community, they were just ordinary people. They were blacksmiths like my great-great-grandfather, James William Jones. They were carpenters, uh, like uh, Alexander Tanners, they were tanners, they were farmers, they were waiters, they were maids, and they did whatever they could to establish themselves and to make ground for themselves. And one of the things that they saw a great need for was a school. And when Jones School was founded, uh, probably around 1882, because that's when it was demanded that you have a school for African Americans, and it probably was the first African American school in this county. And that school sat just to the right over here, and there are some uh, photographs around of it, and uh, at least three generations of my family attended that school. My great grandmother, Lizzie, my grandmother, Alice Bowman, Jones Fortune, and that's the lady that. Uh, Really, really want to thank for his day. Uh, but even before that, like I said, Mount, uh, John Wesley was founded in 1873. Uh, it was a log <coughs> cabin uh, underneath the well boarding that I uh, came to know. Uh, you know, my grandmother told me they were logs, and you know, I believed it, but it wasn't until uh, we did some renovation about in 1982. Uh, that uh, we uh, they had to expose one whole wall, and I don't know if any of you've been in it, but they uh, I think for some of us, they were many times that you can see where a couple of insects are trying to where's the way in there. Uh, it's <laughs> and, uh, back that right. Uh, and years, uh, the churches, uh, well, they shared congregations, they didn't share the building, but they shared the congregation on uh, the first and third Sunday. Uh, they met at the Methodist Church and on the second and fourth church uh, 
Sunday we met here at this church. And uh, so I came to think of myself as a method back. And, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, seven years later, I decided I liked the way the Methodists did things a little bit better. And so that's where I joined. And uh, uh, one of my cousins uh, said to me, uh, I hear you joined the Methodist Church. And I said, yes, Cousin Charlie, you did. And she said, well, I guess that's better than nothing. <laughs> and one of the uh, things that uh, you could do for a living back in the day was to be a farmer. But any of you who are familiar with this land, um, you weren't going to do a whole lot of gardening because it got a surprise. You dig about three inches down and you come up with boulders or rocks or whatever you want to call it that's uh, bigger than I am. But they, that didn't stop them either because they grew enough food to, uh, to, to uh, die. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then, uh, one of the, I'm not, the present minister I have uh, not too long ago, he uh, uh, did a, ser a service for a couple of our members who died. And one of the things he reminded us is to remember the name, say the name. And that's what we did today in the way that, to say the names of Sarah Jones, so, to say the name of William Jones, to say the name of. Elizabeth Bolden, to say the name of Charles Bolden, to say the name of uh, Austin B. and of the uh, Robert Wright and all of the other names who some of the ancestors still live here and other ones have long gone, but we get to say the names. Not too long ago when I was doing research for another little project, I came across uh, an obituary in 1938, and it was for my great great grandmother who donated this land in memory of her, her <clears throat> husband who had died in 1910. Uh, and the obituary said that Sarah Jones, believed to be 100 years old, uh, died at 5 30 in the morning in March 1938, and that she was. A slave, which I knew, but until I found an article, I didn't really realize where she was a slave for uh, the Mays family. And that uh, her father was a John Law, and that she had many, many children. And in my research, I found that to be true. And actually, some of them were buried on this property. Uh, it's unmarked. I think she had 13 children, and only one of them, my great grandfather. Uh, Albert was the only one that survived. And we often think about the sorrow that she and other women who, you know, had the children that uh, don't know why they died so young, but you know, there were like three sets of twins. Uh, then in the next generation, sort of the same thing happened. So I think there was something uh, genetic uh, there. But anyway, uh, there have been many, many memories uh, here. Uh, at this church, we have John Wesley. I can remember the uh, homecomings and the rallies uh, before they had the fellowship hall, and so they would spread the dinner on the ground in June and pray that it would rain. Big time, uh, the churches were there. And as time went on, a lot of our young people have uh, left here. Now, in fact, it's one of the few uh, the spare generations that remain. Uh, but all of them took the blessings and they took the lessons they, they learned from here in Warm Springs and they went on to be educators, uh, doctors. Uh, this uh, gentleman who was uh, a newspaper reporter, uh, there were uh, two presidents of historic black colleges, came from this community, and also one European at Morris. And uh, so, as things change, things fade, we still want to recognize and honor the folks who come here before us. And although the face of the community is changing, uh, we are still here and I'm so glad today. Thank God that we have this 
how we model that we'll say after we all bought that these folks <coughs> did live here in West Mount Spring so that they were vital part of the community. And now I'd like to introduce Kathleen Fritz Wilson, uh, who uh, I met but anyway, uh, it was doing the old barn heritage days up at the, at the barn, and she was doing a, uh, uh, I guess, an antique road show for textiles. Uh, he's a textile expert, and this was very interesting. And, you know, I watch all these people come up with their family and uh, whatever. I talk to a lady and I said, well, gee, I don't have anything like, like that. Uh, I said, I just got these old books that I used to have that belonged to my <laughs> great grandmother, and she seemed interested. And I said, well, if you're that interested, I just live two miles down the road, I'll go get her, man. And then the next thing I know, she and Jean was here. Uh, they were climbing up on top of the tables, usually the cameras, and uh, whatever taking pictures of these photographs, and I know my great grandmother Lizzie probably would want to know what in the world is going on here. But anyway, I didn't think I'd really hear anything about it, but uh, she's here to tell you uh, <laughs> of all the things that uh, uh, she's come to know about my family. So, welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you to everybody for coming, and thank you for uh, Phil for inviting me. He particularly called up and said, would you be willing to come and talk a little bit? Um, I asked him what he wanted me to say or what he wanted me to talk about, and he said, just, you know, I don't know. So I said, why don't I say a little bit about my background and why I'm interested in all that, and then I'll talk a little bit about how I met for list and the story of that was now in the book of uh, enslaved woman and her best neighbor daughter. And then I'd like to talk a little bit about my next book, which is called Dancing at the Warm Springs Hotel. So Calista has told a lot already. Uh maybe stole my thunder. I don't have a slide presentation or anything today. This is the second time I had an opportunity to be in this beautiful church. Again, on a beautiful Sunday, and it's a beautiful day. Um, I'm so excited that West Warm Springs is really on the map now. And as Calista told you a little bit about me, but I'll go back a little further. Um, I studied weaving as a, as a kid. I got interested in textiles from my grandmother <coughs> and was always interested in fabrics and textiles. Studied as a weaver, had a, my own studio for a little while, and have stayed interested in textiles. But I, you have to sort of jump ahead past children and marriage and all that. And I then owned a textile mill in Abington, Virginia. And at the time, we were making. Um, Colonial coverlets, blankets, uh, table linens for high-end resort communities and individuals. It was a time when everybody was interested in uh, early American kinds of home decorating. But what happened there changed the rest of my life because we had a retail shop and people would come in and see these old blankets and they'd come in with their daughters daughter say, oh, mom, I want one of those 